Manuel Torres Felix, also known as M1, or El Ondeado, is considered one of the most faithful and ferocious hitmen to the El Mayo Zambada's crime group. When he is mentioned, the new members of the Caldero de Sinaloa show their kind of admiration towards the criminal recognized as one of the fiercest adversaries of the Beltran Leva brothers. Before we discuss the rise and fall of one of El Chapo's most faithful gunmen and the leader of his group of Sicarios, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to be the first to receive our latest videos. Manuel Torres Felix was Mayo Zambada's right-hand man in his operations as one of the cartel's key elements. His brother, Javier Torres Felix, also known as LJT, was also an important member of the Sinaloa cartel. Manuel Torres Felix was born on February 28, 1958, in Llanos de Refugio, Cosala, Sinaloa. There is not a lot of documented records about his early life. He made his appearance in 1990, where he was part of the Sinaloa cartel, which back then, it was commonly called the Pacific Cartel. After the capture of his brother Javier by Mexican army personnel in January 2004, El Mayo Zambada named Manuel criminal lieutenant. Although, since 2008, he was an active part of violent actions that the cartel carried out against antagonistic criminal organizations. As Mayo Zambada's lieutenant, El Ondeado coordinated the reception and transfer of drugs by the sea in the states of Chiapas and Oaxaca from South America, among other commissions of aggravating crimes for Mexican society. He managed these operations alongside Ovidio Guzman, son of El Chapo Guzman. The first reports go back to 2001. El Ondeado's uncle was killed along with several people in the community of El Limoncito de Alaya, Cosala. For Javier and Manuel Torres, that was a heavy blow, as they took the blame for the deaths of the innocents. Years later, Manuel's nephew, Joel Torres, knocked on death's door not one, but three times, having survived severe gunshot attacks. But the worst for Manuel came on April 19, 2008 when an armed convoy driven by members of the Beltran Leva cartel attacked a van with AK-47 rifles in the Montebello neighborhood in Culiacan. This hit led to the killing of Manuel Torres's son, Atanasio Torres Acosta, aka El Tatio. The hitmen of the Beltran Leva cartel injured a girl and a young woman in the same incident. The young girl was Atanasio's sister, identified as four-year-old Alondra, who presented a right forearm detachment caused by an impact and a shredded bullet in the shoulder. The young woman was his sister-in-law, identified as Sandra Rivas Heredia, 24, who suffered a shot in her right leg. The murderers left a note stating the following, from your compadre and his two nephews, Manuel Torres, to keep it in mind. Ministerial policemen quickly removed this note. Since that moment, Manuel Torres Felix was never the same man, some say that was the trigger that made him quickly lose his mind and went on a killing spree against any entity that would seem to antagonize the cartel. He began with torturing the perpetrators at their home in Culiacan. This earned him the nickname El Ondeado, meaning the wavy or the crazy one, for his emotional instability and explosive personality. Just a few months later after this tragedy, on the same spot where Manuel Torres's son died, a group of Sicarios abandoned the bodies of two alleged perpetrators, one wrapped in a canvas and one beheaded inside a barrel with a note attached to one of the bodies. The PME reported that one of the executed persons was a 32-year-old Guillermo Cabada Zazueta, originally from Los Cedritos, Cosala. He was without his thumb when the police found him. He was on a canvas and tied with an orange bow similar to the several other bodies found in several locations in Via Juarez, Navolato, and in the community of El Chia in Tacamona. The second victim was Amadeo Vega Vergara, 35, aka El Caiman. He was beheaded and inside a plastic barrel, where there was a note found that stated the following. These are Arturo Beltran Leva's homosexual hitmen. In the barrel is a Caiman himself, so they can learn some respect respect to my children. Needless to say, the press and the whole town quickly realized that this hit came from Manuel Torres Felix with the purpose of not only avenging his son, but to strike fear into everybody who thought they could mess with the M1. More bodies came, some of them beheaded, 
with multiple gunshots or filled with bruises. The one thing all the bodies had was notes attached to them. That same week, the police found up to five corpses dropped on the same spot where the murder of Manuel Torres Felix's son took place in April. Locals near that spot reported that unknown subjects arrived at the site and left a red Nissan Suru vehicle, model 1993, without the plates, but with a VJK-6649 decal from Sinaloa. Inside the trunk were the bodies of three people beheaded and snouted in their legs. One of the victims had the body of a snake next to him, with a piece of paper in one of his hands and a note stating, for you to keep it in mind, Arturo Beltran Leva, from El Ondeado, nickname you put on. You know what I'm talking about. I'm going to leave you worse than your dear centaur, pair of homosexuals. I'm going to make you, Pinola, a toll for being a traitor and a coward. Stop putting blankets and messages. If you're such a man, let's meet man to man. This goes to either you or your El Guacho, El Chiquilin, or your dog eating and child killing police killing carros. You better shoot yourself. Stop doing those infamous acts. All of you together are too little for me alone. Attached, El Ondeado. The letter and the following events caused great fear among those who were inside and outside the cartel. It also served as an inspiration for several corridos, or songs dedicated to Manuel Torres Felix. These songs not only told the story of El Ondeado's revenge against his enemies, but also about his entire life. This carried out, and eventually, Manuel Torres Felix became one of Sinaloa's most dangerous drug traffickers. Hundreds of deaths were attributed to commandos led by Torres Felix, who earned the pseudonym El Ondeado for their emotional instability initiated after Atanasio's death. In September 2008, the Mexican military located a house owned by Torres Felix where they found several firearms, narcotics, radio equipment, and a bulletproof vehicle. The Mexican army also found a photo of Torres Felix accompanied by Misael Torres Urea, nicknamed LM2, his nephew and son of Javier Torres Felix. Torres Felix was placed on the list for most wanted drug traffickers under the law of the designation of foreign narcotics capos by the United States government on June 1st, 2011, along with Gonzalo Inzunza Inzunza, aka El Macho Prieto, another high-ranking lieutenant of the Sinaloa cartel. The Mexican general prosecutor offered up to 3 million pesos for information leading to its arrests. Even before he was a wanted man, Manuel Torres Felix lived in the woods. Sources from Rio Dose confess he rarely came to town, and he did not go beyond Cosala. He knew the Culichi Mountains and its surroundings, especially in the southern sector, because it was his home. From there, he controlled his operations at the service of El Mayo Ismael Zambada Garcia. But it all came to an end on October 13th, 2012, when the Mexican armed forces killed Manuel Torres Felix in an abandoned area in Oso Viejo, Culiacan. Unofficial versions indicated that when the military men had him in their hands, he was already dead, with more punches than bullets and an exposed elbow fracture. This is where the information collides with official reports. According to information conducted by the Office of the Attorney General of the Republic, El Ondeado held six gunshot lesions, two in the chest, one in the abdomen, one in the left arm, one in the thigh, and two more in the left leg. The cause of death, according to expert conclusion, was a pulmonary laceration in both lungs. The body was in the forensic medical service from Saturday morning to Monday night, but no one explained why on the night he allegedly died, members of the Mexican army took his body to the morgue without the previous actions from the public prosecutor's office. His family had his body for as long as it was possible, from Monday night and all Tuesday at the funeral home. On Wednesday, a morning mass and its transfer to the villages where he used to live, and on Thursday, back to the funeral home, and then, during the afternoon, to Jardines del Jumaya, to the tomb where his son Athanasius is. The florists had their uptick in sales. There were crowns for Manuel Torres Felix of 500 roses for $500, and a bit more expensive of 1,500 roses and other flowers at $1,400. Although those were the least, 
each of these commercial establishments managed to sell on the first day between 12 and 15 flower crowns and other arrangements. This shows the number of people that had respect and great care towards El Ondeado. The coffin, metallic and plated in gold, along with all the services contracted by the family, had a cost of about 620,000 pesos, which is almost $30,000. Three days after his death, at least three narco banners were seen in Culiacan, accusing Ismael El Mayo Zambada of betraying his right-hand man and set his murder through corrupt military men. And those banners are still seen today. Earlier this year, in March, a couple of banners accusing El Mayo of treason were seen in Culiacan. Ironically, these messages appeared to be signed by no other than Manuel Torres Felix. The fact that there were rumors about Manuel Torres being delivered already dead to the military is what struck all the people near him and caused them to think he was betrayed by his boss, his partner, and his friend, Ismael Mayo Zambada. In the end, his death didn't affect the logistics inside the cartel, but instead it's used as a reminder that the Mexican government is willing to overthrow the main leaders of the Sinaloa cartel on their territory. His death also made other members of the cartel extremely paranoid about the fact that they were in danger of being captured by the police thanks to their own boss's tips. The trust of the cartel's high figures was never the same. That's our video for today. What do you think about this story? Did you think we missed anything? Tell us the videos you'd like to see next and we'll see you in the next video.